Hello students. Welcome to the lecture series on computer engineering graphics that is CAEG. Myself Professor Nitin is Desai from mechanical engineering department. As we are able to see our course has three units. First unit is projection of planes and solids. Second unit is orthographic projection and the third unit is isometric projections. Today we will be starting with the third unit that is isometric projections. Within the isometric projection uh, during our lesson 1, we will be understanding what is the concept of isometric projection, the principle behind the uh, isometric projection. Up till now you are familiar with orthographic projections. So, you know what is front view, top view and side view. So, we will be understanding what is the principle behind isometric projection. So, what is isometric projection? It is the method for visually representing three dimensional objects in two dimensions. So, three dimensional objects will be having length, height and width. So, this will be drawn on a two dimensional paper. Where we are using it? We are using in technical drawings that is engineering drawings. So, all the particular technical and engineering drawings will be referring to isometric projections also. In reality, it is a single view system in contrast with orthopedic projection which is multiple view uh, projections. It is a single view axonometric projections wherein the three coordinate axes appear equally foreshortened and the angle between any two of them is 120 degrees. So, what we are doing in isometric projection we will just understand in the next slide. Before we proceed further, we will understand what is the difference between orthographic projections and isometric projections. Right now, what you are able to see in the picture is an uh, orthographic projections, wherein three views have been presented referring to the first angle method of projection. So, we have a front view, below that we have a top view and then on the right side we have a side view. In typically orthographic projection, what we see is, is in any given view, one particular face of this object, this is seen in that particular view. Now, in the other view, some another face that will be seen. In this particular example, what you are able to see in the front view is the front face of the object. In the top view, we are able to see the top face of the object and in the side view, we are able to see the left face of the object. Now, in order to understand what is the particular object, we need some technical skills. So, we need technical skills to correlate the front view, top view and side view with one another so as to visualize what that object is. In contrast with orthoic projections, what happens in an isometric projection is, in an isometric projection we have a single view, whereas you are able to see in this single view, we are able to see the front face of the object, top face of the object and the left face of the object. Here all the three axes that is the length axis, height axis as well as the width axis, this is been seen in a single view. Okay. So, an isometric projection is a single view system which shows details on three faces, front face, left face and top face in a single view. Now, this is more particularly revealed with the help of a common example such as a car which an any layman or person on the road that will be able to see. Similarly, on the particular technical side, so if you are dealing with some kind of industry, so a, th a three dimensional view of an machine tool, this has been shown on the right side. Now, for a customer, the three dimensional view of this car who is going to buy it. So, that is much more particularly useful which is going to help him uh, in making a selection of that car. So, which particular car here, same thing happens in case of machine tools also. So, both the figures they are showing you the single view, but within a single view I am able to get much more details about that object. Okay. That is the advantage of an isometric view. Now, as you can be able to see here, this is much more realistic, the view of this car, this is much more realistic to be understood by the family members of the customer who is going to buy this car. Okay. So, this is useful for a non-technical person, we do not have to particularly read the orthographic projection, we do not have to learn how to use that orthographic projection to visualize this object. In order to see this comparison, we are just considering a mechanical machine part. Now, on the left side, what you are able to see 
is orthophoric projection of an machine part over here. So, we have given a front view, top view and a side view. Whereas, on the right side you are able to see the isometric projection of the same machine part. Let us see on the left side. So, we have front view, we have top view and we have a right hand side view which is drawn on the left side pertaining to the first angle method of projection. Within this particular front view, if you are able to see, so there are two lines here. So, this is one line and this is another line, second line. Now, for a non-technical person just looking at this front view, he or she will not be able to understand what is the meaning of these two lines. Now, that can be cleared only if, if I see the top view. So, by seeing in the top view, I am able to see that this is pertaining to the uh, slot. Okay. Let us switch our attention to our uh, isometric view. Now, what you are able to see in the isometric view is all the details about this object. So, all the three dimensions that is the width, that is length, also the depth and the height, these are seen in the single view over here. Okay. At the same time, we are able to see the slot also. Okay. So, all the features of this object, this has been particularly understood in a single view. That is the particular advantage of a isometric projection over the orthopic projection. In a single view, I am able to get much more details. Let us see how this particular isometric projection is obtained. Before we proceed further, we will just see on the left side the principle of drawing orthographic projections. So, what we are able to have is we have a plane of projection and the object is so placed that the faces of this particular object. So, they are either parallel to the plane of projection or they are perpendicular. Okay. So, if you are able to see here the plane A, B, C, D, this is parallel to the plane of projection and we are able to see the true shape of this shape, uh, true shape of the face A, B, C, D on the front view. Okay. In contrast with this, what we do in isometric projection is we are not disturbing the reference plane. So, the reference plane remains the same. So, we are using horizontal plane and a vertical plane. We are changing the way this object this is being placed. So, what we do is with this object we tilt it so that the all the faces of this object they are equally inclined to the principal planes horizontal plane, vertical plane and a profile plane. So, the front view of this object that is the isometric projection. So, in reality isometric projection is also a parallel projection wherein the object is tilted equally with all the reference plane. Let us understand some definitions about this isometric projections. What you are able to see is three coordinate axis, x axis, y axis and the z axis. The x and y axis these are the length and the width axis whereas, z is the height axis. Along with that we have isometric planes. So, there will be x y isometric plane, y z isometric plane and x z isometric plane. Depending upon what we choose as the front view direction. So, this particular isometric planes will be named as a front plane, top plane and a left plane or a right plane. Okay. So, this is the way these isometric planes are there. Now, the lines might be within these isometric planes, these are called as the inclined line, whereas the lines which are along the isometric axis, these are called as the isometric lines. There are some of the lines which are inclined to both the planes, these are called as the oblique lines. So, we are able to see on this left side one of the line which is crossing the x z plane as well as the x y plane. The basic nature of obtaining this isometric projection, so leads to some kind of a confusion also. So, within the next figure what you are able to see here is, this is a very famous figure which is called as the Penrose staircase. Now, you can place yourself at any particular one step. Okay. And you can continue in either anti clockwise direction or clockwise direction. Let us say you start with anti clockwise direction, you start from this particular point and you move in anti clockwise direction, you will be able to see that you are going to 
climb this staircase, if you continue and complete one particular <coughs> revolution over here, again you are coming back to this start point. In reality, if it was actually a staircase, what would have happened is you would have been taken to the new height. Okay. So, this is the confusing nature of the isometric projection also. So, it gives you some kind of a, a false uh, feeling also. Okay. So, it needs particularly to be understood very clearly. Uh, when we said that the object is equally inclined to the horizontal plane, vertical plane and the side plane that is the profile plane over here. So, since the line gets inclined to one of the reference plane, so the view of that particular line that will be reduced. So, pertaining to that we have two types of projection, one is called as an isometric projection and the other one that is called as an isometric view. Now, if you consider the reduction in size and draw that isometric view that will be called as an isometric projection and if you neglect the reduction in size due to the tilting of the lines with the horizontal, vertical and profile planes that is called as an regular uh, <coughs> scale projection that is isometric view over here. Okay. Now, for converting the regular scale distances into an isometric scale, so we have constructed a scale diagram here. We draw a horizontal line and then we draw two lines, one line at 30 degrees to the horizontal and the other line at 45 degree to the horizontal. The line which is at 45 degree to the horizontal uh, has the regular scale distances, whereas the line which is at 30 degree to the horizontal that has isometric scale distances. So, what is the distance that we want to convert into isometric scale? So, what we do is we get that distance plot it along the regular scale. Let us say the first point here. So, this is the first point. Then we drop a vertical line downwards okay, and wherever it cuts the isometric scale line. So, that will be our isometric distance. So, this is the way we convert regular distances into isometric distances. Now, for creating this isometric views, there are some particular ways in which this isometric view is called. The most popular way is the envelope method or the box method here. So, on the left side we are able to see the front view, top view and side view of an object considering the third angle method of projection. So, we have front view on top of that we have the top view and on the right side we have the right hand side view. Taking into consideration the three views we visualize this object and we find out the length, height and the width. So, first of all on the right side we construct what is called as the box that is enveloping box and when we create this enveloping box within that we go on creating the features depending upon what is there on the front plane, top plane and the right hand side plane. So, this way we are able to draw that isometric view. In our particular next lecture we will be showing you how to draw this isometric view. Along with that we will be also showing you how to draw circles in isometric view. So, that is all for today students, we will meet in, in the second lecture for giving the procedure for drawing isometric view as well as how to draw isometric scales. <laughs>